Bio 30, welcome to Mutations Abnormal Meiosis. This is video two on mutations. So today we are going back into that learning intention of how to evaluate and demonstrate the consequences of mutations on cells. Today we're going to be able to define non-disjunction, identify the stages of meiosis when non-disjunction occurs, and define the words monosomy and trisomy. Mutations during meiosis. You're going to be in your notes. Find this. I believe it is on page eight, I think. Nope, that doesn't sound right. Let me look for you. It is on page 16. Okay, so we're working on page 16. Um, mutations during meiosis. So we're going to start with the two types of mutations that happen during my that can happen during any part of the cell cycle. There are two types. So we learned about point mutations or gene mutations that happen during replication. And then today we're going to talk about chromosomal mutations what happen during meiosis. During mutations, they can occur naturally. So I talked a little bit yesterday about how when a point mutation occurs, it occurs because there is a change up to the nitrogenous bases. And this can happen naturally and have no effects, or sometimes it can have a huge effect. There's a lot of mutations that happen naturally. That's also why you're a little bit different than mom and dad. It creates variation. However, mutagens are a big problem for mutations. So when you come into contact with any type of mutagen, it can actually affect your DNA. So there's things like physical mutagens, chemicals, base analogs, heavy metals, biological agents and intercalating agents. Now, I don't, there's a space in your notes to put this down. I am not going to be focusing on any of these at any time soon, but if you wanna write them down, you can. I'm gonna move forward into the actual, what is a mutation during meiosis? So what are chromosomal mutations? What are they exactly? We're gonna define these because we've already defined what a point mutation is. So again, on page 16, it should say, what is a chromosomal mutation? And we're just gonna write it up down. So essentially they are the change of a structure or the number of chromosomes. So normally you have a diploid number of 46 chromosomes in every cell in your body. However, someone who has a chromosomal mutation may have 45, 47, or even 48 chromosomes found within each cell. Now that being said, sometimes a chromo mu chromosomal mutation can actually be an affected chromosome because it's missing pieces. Uh, there is a disease called Huntington's disease. It's unfortunately deadly. It happens to chromosome number four, where you actually are missing a piece of chromosome number four. So there's not an extra chromosome, you're just missing pieces from it. We're going to talk about another type of disease that's similar to that later on. So what does an abnormal cell division look like? We're going to start with a cell. So we're going to just draw this down and we're going to discuss it. So you're going to start with your cell. And inside your cell, you're going to add some chromosomes. So here I have two chromosomes from mom, two from dad. Um, at this point, I'm just showing a generalized version of mitosis. I'm not going into meiosis. I just want to show you in general what I mean by abnormal cell division. So what's happening is, is all of these we know from the process of anaphase should technically divide evenly. So you can see the first three are dividing evenly. One sister chromatid is going up and the other sister chromatid is going down. But you'll notice this final chromosome, it's not splitting, it's staying together. The sister chromatids are joining together to go up into the next cell. This is where abnormal meiosis happens. So the top cells will have five chromosomes. So if we counted all the individual chromosomes, there'd be one, two, three, the last one has two, so it'd be five, but the bottom cell will only get three. So this is a problem because it should divide equally. We know that after meiosis two, okay, or mitosis, when we look at how cells divide, they split evenly and share the chromosomes evenly in each new cell. So in your notes, draw this under the diagram that shows abnormal meiosis or cell division. We're going to roll through and now talk about specifically abnormal meiosis and the issues that occur in each stage. So what is abnormal meiosis? So it's chromosomal abnormalities that result when our chromosomes and chromatids don't separate. 
When this happens, we call this non-disjunction. So there's our definition for today. Non-disjunction is when our chromosomes don't separate properly. Non-disjunction happens in two ways. It happens in either anaphase one, where our homologous chromosomes don't move to opposite poles, or it happens in anaphase two, where our sister chromatids don't separate. I'm gonna show you both of these here shortly. So again, today, our success criteria was understanding when does this non-disjunction occur? Here it is, anaphase one and anaphase two. If I talk about non-disjunction, I'm talking about either anaphase one or anaphase two. Now, unfortunately, when we diagnosed chromosomal abnormalities, we actually don't know what phase the chromosomal, chromosomal abnormality occurred, but we know that it can happen in either anaphase one or anaphase two. So for our understanding, we're gonna talk about both. So you have this picture in your notes. We are going to add to our understanding in this picture in the chart that is below this, okay? So there's non-disjunction during anaphase one and non-disjunction during anaphase two. So we're gonna talk first about non-disjunction during anaphase one, which follows this lovely picture right here, all right? So what you're seeing here is here is a cell that is supposed to be going through anaphase. As you can see, the homologous chromosomes are separating. They're doing a good job here, they're separating. But in anaphase one, in non-disjunction, these two decide to stay together. What happens when those two decide to stay together is we only have one chromosome coming into this cell. And when we have, uh, I guess, six coming into this cell, two, four, six, okay? Because there's three X's coming down here. What you will notice the end result happens is that in the end, after both meiosis one and meiosis two has occurred, you end up with cells that are not actually, uh, that they don't have enough chromosomes in them. So they're not actually a full set of chromosomes. So you have gametes that have extras and gametes that are missing. And that's what you're seeing by N plus one and N minus one. We know N means haploid. Haploid is the half the amount of chromosomes. So in our case, haploid is 23. If I see N plus one, it means that I have 23 chromosomes plus an extra. If I see N minus one, I know I have 23 chromosomes minus one, so I'm at 22. So in anaphase one, if non-disjunction occurs, we end up with four very unhealthy cells. If non-disjunction occurs during anaphase two, it's a little less dangerous because you do produce some healthy cells. So normally we go through anaphase one, as you can see here, and when it was supposed to split in this cell, it didn't, it stayed. So we have one cell that goes through anaphase properly and one cell that does not, that splits into two. So you can see here, we have two healthy cells and two unhealthy cells. Again, showing one cell will have one too many and one cell will have one less. So in your notes, there is a chart. Please write this information down in that chart so you know the difference between anaphase one and anaphase two. Now, what we're gonna talk about tomorrow is something called a karyotype. And that's actually how we diagnose most chromosomal abnormalities. That this whole, how we see extras will make more sense. And I'm gonna talk about a few diseases to kind of bring it together to show you what I mean. So non-disjunction. That's essentially the whole point of abnormal meiosis. What we're gonna talk about is some key vocab words, and then I'm gonna run through a couple different diseases. You can keep uh, taking notes. I want your notes taken on trisomy and monosomy. However, the disease part, you can just watch because you're gonna need it for your assignment, but you do not need to uh, worry about writing it all down. You can just review the video. So normal gametes, again, have 23 chromosomes. Abnormal, we're either gonna end up with 24 or we're gonna end up with 22. So we're talking gamete cells. We're not talking normal body cells, we're talking gamete cells. So when I am looking at a gamete, if it has too many, okay, or I'm looking at a cell, a body cell that has too many, we call that trisomy. Why we call it trisomy is because when I'm looking at the picture of my all of my chromosomes, at one place, there's three. So there's three homologous chromosomes. I'll show you a picture of it here shortly. 
An example of something that's trisomy that you may be aware of is trisomy 21. Trisomy 21, we don't normally call it that, we normally refer to it as Down syndrome. So it means that a person with Down syndrome has three chromosomes when at the 21st chromosome. Monosomy is meaning that we're missing something. So instead of having a pair of chromosomes, we have a single chromosome. So we're missing a chromosome and we're resulting in 45 chromosomes instead of 46. An example of this is Turner syndrome, where a person produces a sex cell with just an X and nothing else. So that's what that little O means. It means there's not another X and there's not another Y. They just have one X. So their sex cells is missing a homologous pair. So I want to go through a couple examples just really quickly. So here's an example, ladies and gentlemen, of a karyotype. And as you can see, I've circled and pointed an arrow to where you would have something called trisomy. There are three chromosomes shown right there. Trisomy 21, or Down syndrome, means that this person has 47 chromosomes. Now, the prevalence in the population is about 1 in 600 babies will end up with Down syndrome. As a mother ages and has children, her incidences increase. A woman that has a child over the age of 35, they actually call it a geriatric pregnancy because as you get older, women's eggs are actually not as healthy and they start to deteriorate a little bit faster. So it's a little bit, it's not dangerous, but it's a little bit uh, of a higher occurrence to see chromosomal abnormalities in older women who have children. There's another way that you can have this happen is of course being exposed to any sort of mutagens. So Down syndrome is a result in, in a lower mental ability and some Down syndrome people have a shortened lifespan, um, but that has changed recently and some of them can live into their 40s and 50s, maybe even 60s. So an example that I wanna show you of, of another trisomy is something called Klinefelter syndrome. So here's another example of a karyotype showing you all the chromosomes that are at that care in, in those spaces. And you'll notice that the sex chromosome has two X's and a Y. So Klinefelter syndrome is also due to non-disjunction, but this time specifically in the gamete, so in the sperm and the egg. So one gamete, instead of containing just one X, ends up containing two X's and the other one has a Y. Uh, someone with Klinefelter syndrome is male at birth, but unfortunately sterile as they produce female hormones. So when you come to uh, think about back to the hormone unit, okay, thinking of all the things that the estrogen does for the female body, it's now doing in the male body because they produce female hormones, okay? So they're not able to grow facial hair very well. They tend to not grow chest hair. Um, they tend to have narrower shoulders. They can develop breasts. They'll end up having wider hips because, again, estrogen widens the hips. And their pubic hair will actually represent more of a female-type pubic hair than a male type. Their arms tend to be longer. So do their legs. And their testicle sizes tend to be smaller, all because they're producing female hormones, not male hormones. So Klinefelter's would be trisomy 23. So three uh, chromosomes at the third, 23rd chromosome pair. Another example of a monosomy, so just another one we can talk about, this is Turner syndrome, okay? This is the one that I had exampled earlier. You can see where we would normally have a sex cell uh, with two chromosomes, we only have one, so it's an XO. So this person is female because they only have one X chromosome. Uh, this is again due to non-disjunction during egg formation, okay? One egg gets both X chromosomes and the other one gets none. So what ends up happening is, is that a cell without an X chromosome can't survive. So what we've discovered is that an X chromosome is actually necessary for life. So a person with Turner syndrome is just missing that second X or a Y in this case, it could be either or, but they're female at birth. This is, they tend to be smaller in stature. They tend to look very childish. They tend to don't, not to grow very much um, simply because they're missing that other sex chromosome. Another example is Jacob syndrome or triple X syndrome. This is again trisomy of the sex chromosomes, but instead of XXY, this is double, this is X double Y or triple X. Um, if you get the double Y, so X double Y, it's considered the super male chromosome gene, um, just because the Y gene is what um, determines males. 
So it does not have a massive effect, but it doesn't affect their IQ a little bit. Um, and it does tend to um, cause overproduction of testosterone because your Y chromosome is what is helping with testosterone production. The opposite triple X, when you're born with an extra X, um, it tends to actually have a, an effect on their height as well as reduces their IQ by quite a bit. So this is again, another example of trisomy. Uh, Edwards and Patau syndrome are another example of trisomies. Uh, this one is at the 18th chromosome and the 13th chromosome. Unfortunately for both of these, the life expectancy of children born with these diseases is very short, 10 weeks, maybe even less. So they're born with severe defects, which is really sad. Um, and unfortunately, for example, like Patau syndrome, their eyes don't function at all. So these are just examples of trisomies that happen at a set of chromosomes that obviously have some very important coding that if you have extra, it, it doesn't work. Where there's other ones like trisomy 21, where yes, there are abnormalities and there's issues, but, um, but that person can live a normal and healthy life. Okay, so it's just a, depending on what is coded on those chromosomes will actually have an effect. And the very last one I want to talk about is this idea of chromosomal abnormalities. We've been focusing a lot on trisomy and monosomy, meaning extra or one less. But a chromosomal abnormality can also mean there's something missing on the chromosome. Okay, fragile X syndrome is a commonly inherited form of an intellectual disability. Although they can function, they have a lower IQ um, and it's linked with the X trait. So it's on the X chromosome. And essentially what happens is, is there is a gap at the bottom of the chromosome. So normally the chromosome is nice and solid all the way through. So you would see a solid chromosome, but instead right here, there's a chunk of that chromosome missing that missing part of that chromosome has an effect on the person's intellectual abilities. So that's an example of showing you that chromosomal abnormalities doesn't have to mean extra or less, it can actually mean an actual effect to the actual chromosome, okay? Um, that being said, for your project, if you have a chromosomal abnormality, you're gonna see extras or less. If you have a point mutation, you're gonna have what you think is just a normal karyotype. We're gonna discuss karyotypes tomorrow. So again, none of these need to be in your notes for the diseases, they're just examples. You can go back and look at. Uh, you do have a space to write down some information about Down syndrome. I do have your notes with Fragile X. You can just take notes on the other ones if you would like. And I hope that you have a great day.